What's good guys, it's Power786 and I'm here today to bring you a video that I've never actually done before on this channel, a story time. Now, before you jump to conclusions yet, no, I did not get sucked up by a powerful vacuum or hoover if you're British. Right, what's the story in Balamori? Well, so this is back in the year 2008. At this point of my life, I really wanted a DCO7. I wanted a DCO7. I wanted a DCO7 really badly. So much so that my profile picture on MSN was a DCO7. Remember MSN? Yeah, good old days, weren't they? Oi! What are you doing? He's pulling the tripod? This flipping cat, man, I swear down. Oi, 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 oi. Stop it! Oh, my little baby, so cute, isn't he? That's my whole son, that is. Anyways, as I was saying, yeah, before my cat rudely pulled the tripod, let me just give you a better view so you'd have to see my Shrek looking face. There you go. So you have something better to look at. Anyways, what was I saying? So, anyways, I was hunting up, down, left, right, center for DC07, like it was my job. And then one morning we went to the car boot sale, which is basically a large field, acres and acres of land, where people meet up. It's like a public garage sale, right? And people fill their cars up with old tat and sell, they sell stuff from the boot of their car. And what do you know, lo and behold, there was a DC07 right there. And I was like, finally, I can get a DC07. When I saw that DC07, I got the maddest goosebumps. A shiver raced down my spine. I was dancing on the spot, yeah, like, yes, getting a DC07 today. And I ran up to it, yeah. Everyone's looking at me like, what's this kid getting excited about? Is he a PlayStation that he saw? Oh, he's running up to the Hoover. <laughs> and there's other parents like, look at that kid, he's getting excited over a Hoover. Vanessa, why can't you be like him? Getting excited over a Hoover. Hello, sir, how much is that Hoover, please? The Dyson, yeah, 45 pounds. Are you mad? Do I look rich to you? 45 pounds for a dusty DC7. Mm -mm. But I remained hopeful. I told my dad, yeah. Dad, that DC sounds £45. Can we get it, please? Come again? £45? Have you gone bananas, mate? I was gutted, needless to say. So obviously I was bothered, yeah? I got upset, moody, grumpy, and I even put on a sad face, hoping my dad would have sympathy for me, because he knows how much I wanted a DC7. Hoping that he'd buy it for me eventually. And I remained hopeful that we'd find another DC07 further down the line, but there wasn't one. So we kept on walking, yeah? And I suddenly spotted, in the corner of my eye, a flash of purple and green. Ooh, DC04. It was five pounds. That's a whole 40 pound cheaper than the DC07 was in case you're not paying attention. But because it was a DC04, yeah, it was a BTEC version of the DC07. Obviously didn't want that because I wanted the DC07. Then the time came to go home. And I was like, okay, you aren't getting anywhere. You made no progress at all this morning. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do to get the DC07 that's right there? It might have your name on it. So I begged my dad, yeah, please get me the DC07. <laughs> but he was having none of it. Look, either you have the DC04 or we go straight home. Fine, let's get the DC04 then. So we got the DC04 and not gonna lie, I was low key quite excited because I never had a DC04 before. But fast forward a few weeks into ownership of this DC04, I had just finished vacuuming the entire downstairs and the whole house actually and I was disappointed that all the dust and dirt had been cleaned up, yeah? And I wanted to vacuum some more, being the vacuum junkie that I am, yeah? Because I vacuumed everywhere. So as a result, I didn't bother holding the cable of the vacuum because I wasn't that bothered. I accidentally stepped on the cable of the vacuum while pushing it forward and suddenly the cable came flying like the vacuum, yeah? With a load of sparks like the 4th of July. I stood there trying to process what happened. Our frozen denial staring at you like, what just happened? Not only did my precious Dyson break, yeah, but it tried to kill me. That was heartbreak. It's like the love of your life trying to kill you. After a few seconds, I clocked into what happened and I ran faster than Usain Bolt to the plug socket trying to unplug it. I was out of breath, you know. I wrapped the cord up, yeah, and I was upset yet angry that my Dyson betrayed me and it was all fake love. So I looked up online on how to refit the cable. And would you know, my 10 year old self managed to fix the cable on a 200 pound plus Dyson vacuum. 
All this happened, my near-death experience happened, all because someone wanted to save a poxy few quid on fixing their vacuum. You lot wouldn't even know of my existence. You would not see my mess tests on my channel. My channel would not have existed. All because someone wanted to save a few pound on a cable repair on their vacuum. How mad is that? But praise be to God that I'm here, I'm alive and I'm well. So yeah, that's how I almost died while vacuuming. But don't go anywhere, I know you live all right. Because I got another story for you. In the 1990s, we had a bougie, fancy Dyson DCO on. That was the vacuum that everyone wanted, yeah? It lasted up uh, a couple of years until it broke. And I was upset that we never replaced it with another Dyson. I remember in the shop, I was moody, grumpy, upset on the highest levels because we never got another Dyson. So my first vacuum of my very own was a Dyson DCO3. Not DCO1, but DCO3. It sounds better, but it's not. That thing was rubbish. It was the worst vacuum I've ever owned in my entire life. And to this day, it was the worst vacuum I've ever seen in my entire life. That thing kept breaking, yeah? Literally, the only good parts of the vacuum were like the wheels and the motor, and that's it. It was so rubbish, yeah, that I couldn't even pick up Cocoa Pop cereal off a hard floor. The brush wouldn't even spin. And it was so rubbish that I had to vacuum on my hands and knees, yeah, with a little stair tool that was like the size of my toe. I could probably suck up more than my nose than that Dyson could. So I decided to pimp it up here yeah, by looking into investing in a mini turbine head. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically one of these attachments here yeah, with a spinning brush. And that thing cost £27. I told my dad about it and he was like, no, that's too expensive. We're not getting that. So one day we were in Curry's, right? And Curry's is basically an electrical retailer that sells home appliances, TVs, you name it. And I showed my dad the mini turbine head and I was like, Daddy, can we get this please? I'd be a good boy, I listen to everything you say, please. I stood still, yeah, fuming, watching my dad exit the store. He was like, we're going home, come on, we're going home now. And I was like, I don't want to go, I want the mini turbine head. So I couldn't steal the accessory, right, because it was packaged up in its own packaging, yeah. But then I saw the Vax uprights on display and they had their own turbo brushes on board, yeah? So they were not packaged, so I had a brainwave. The devil himself whispered into my ear and he was like, You've got to steal that turbo brush! And because they were in their original packaging, yeah, they were straight off the vacuum, I figured that I could have get in trouble by the security if I did get caught because I could just say that Oh, this was in my pocket. It was already from home. It just happened to be there, even though it was brand new. So as I was saying, yeah, I was just stood there. The seconds that went by felt like minutes. The longest seconds of my life. I was just staring at the Vax turbo brushes, yeah, and the exit, trying to decide what to do, what my next move would be. I was, however, paranoid that my dad would drive off and leave me behind because he was annoyed that I wanted a Dyson turbo brush again because all I focused on was Dysons. I live, breathe and eat and sleep Dysons. Yeah, so I was like, you know what? It's not worth it, but I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go. I've gotta go home. So I got in the car, yeah. Frustrated, like. Anyway, since at home, at the time we had red wall to wall carpet everywhere. It was a nice medium pile. And we had a rubbish little straight suction cylinder vacuum, yeah? Morphe Richards, need, needless to say. Orb, Cyclone, purple and silver thing, yeah. Not like you care anyways. The point is, we didn't have a decent vacuum. We had a dusty, broken DCO3 and that little vacuum as well. So the engineer in me decided to have a look at the Dyson again. And I just saw the rubber belt and I was like, okay, I've got to get this rubber belt onto the motor spindle because the way the brush spins on a vacuum, yeah, bearing in mind that brush never spins since day one. When the motor spins, it makes a brush spin by connecting it to a rubber belt, yeah? So I finally managed to get that done months after owning it. The moment I switched it on, yeah, in its properly working form for the first time was a surreal experience. It felt like I was using the most powerful vacuum in the world. It was grooming the carpet way, leaving the most incredible groom lines. It picked up the hugest ball of dust and dirt in one go I've ever seen in my life. I was baffled how a vacuum works so well. I was looking at it like, oh, all that dirt in one go, one vacuuming session. I was so impressed that I called everyone to have a look. I skated up the stairs, yeah, to my auntie who was on the phone at the time to a friend, yeah, that 
You gotta get off the phone. You gotta get off the phone. Get off the phone. I wanna show you something. I wanna show you something. Yeah! So that's the second story. And the third and final story is this. So one day in secondary school, I was in English class. My English teacher made me get up to tell the rest of the class what I was gonna write my assessment on. So I did just that and I was telling the class what I was gonna do. So class, this is what I'm gonna do today. So I'm gonna be writing about... Then suddenly, the teacher dramatically interrupted me. She was like, oh, by the way, I saw you in the car yesterday. What did you just say? The whole entire class was in hysterics laughing at me. <laughs> Also the hand dryers in school, you know, in the bathrooms, yeah, you dry your hands. Those sounded like vacuums and they were hella loud as well. Every time someone used one of those, everyone just looked at me like... But I wasn't even that embarrassed because I was known for being the vacuum kid at school. Like, my nickname was Dyson in school. Yo Dyson, is that you? Oh yeah, it was good bro! So prior to that day when I was vacuuming the car, something mad happened. We had a yellow DTO7 at the time. Yeah, I finally got my DTO7 now. All the doors of the car were unlocked, yeah? It was almost as if I got cursed. Like, as if a ghost came to haunt me, like, you gonna get in trouble today, boy? I stupidly shut the door with the keys inside the car by the gear stick. I was in denial. Nah, this ain't happening. This ain't happening. And on top of that, yeah, the handle to my Dyson was in the car as well. So I lost the handle. I lost my own beloved Dyson's handle in the car! I panicked and I ran to a family friend's house, yeah? He used to have his own garage, by the way. I go to him, uncle, can you help me, please? He came to show me, yeah, that if you pry open the car door through the gap, you can reach the keys with the coat hanger. So he showed me a trick here that if you pry open the car door in the corner, you know where the window is, yeah? And get a coat hanger to fish out the keys, you could just do that. And I was like, okay, thanks. So, I was literally searching my wardrobe here, trying to find something long enough, a coat hanger long enough, or anything, for that matter, I couldn't. Because I left the keys right at the gear stick, I couldn't find anything long enough. I had the maddest anxiety, yeah, and I needed something to prove to my dad that I was sorry. So I had a little Morphe Richards pod vacuum, a little purple and green one, that I got from the car boot sale for three pounds. Three pounds at the time, and I didn't want to part with it, I love that thing. But I forced myself to sell it. So I could just give my dad the cash and be like, here you go, I'm sorry, <laughs> just take it. I was a young little entrepreneur, you know, making profit at that age. I sold it for about eight pound, that's five pound profit. It's not a lot, I know, but it's something, do you know what I mean? Luckily, the person who wanted to buy it came straight away and the transaction was done. After that, I ran to my auntie's house, yeah, and I told her what happened because I was so scared to tell my dad, yeah, I was literally about to fill my pants. So my auntie did me the favour and told my dad what happened because I was scared. So I stayed the night at my auntie's house and then the next day came by. At this point, the next morning, I hoped that my dad had just processed what happened and he would be calm with it now and not angry in the heat of the moment, basically, yeah. So I was just there hoping please just be all right please i want everything to be all right once i got home yeah he just jokingly said to me that oh you owe me 80 pound for locksmith but not really he just managed to do it i don't know how he did it yeah but he sorted the car out so yeah so what's the moral of these stories well first of all yeah don't be a cheapskate because you can kill someone good things come to those who wait and I, you know i got off dc or seven after years and years of waiting and be yourself, because people will respect you for who you are. They can just tell if you're real or not. Trust me, they will. They'll just know if you're real or not. And be grateful for what you have. So that's the end of my first story time video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Comment. Whatever you want to comment. If you liked it or hated it, whatever. Let me know if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. Be sure to share with your family and friends. And yeah, I'll be back with some more videos.